Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 310 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. It's really good to be back. Uh, we have video on Spotify. So if you're on any of the other audio streaming apps, get off it. Get on Spotify. Okay. We got video there. It's a, it's a overall better experience. Uh, if you're on YouTube, well, you know what I'm talking about. You get to look at my brand new head. See, this is the thing that all these other audio enjoyers are missing out on is I spend all this money and all this time getting a brand new head and what, you're going to listen to me on Podbean or something? <laughs> or on, on or on the obscure Android app that, that you've been using since 2012 and you're too stubborn to change your ways? All right, we get it. Your phone, your selfies are pixelated. It's time to get over to Spotify. Oh, but I use... I use uh, I use uh, Tidal for my music for high fidelity audio. Cool, man. Well, you have AirPods, so <laughs> can't hear it. Anyway, uh, we thought we'd start this episode off with a little taste test. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Keelan is going to walk in front of the camera. Sorry to all of our video viewers on Spotify, um, but if you're listening on Podbean, no worries. Uh, <laughs> you didn't see it. Um, Keelan's gone out, and and what have you brought back for us, Mr. Beast Bar? These nuts. These Nuts Bar and Crunch Bar. I cannot believe that he actually called it Deez Nuts. That's, I mean, that's your treat. I love it. That's a, a match made in heaven. Have you <laughs> tried either of these? The, the Feastables is what they're called. Yeah, I haven't tried them yet, but would you like to? I'll this try is- one. Now, this is going to be a really interesting experiment because not only are we going to find out if the Feastables are good, but we're also going to find out if I can bite into something, oh, yeah. <laughs> which I haven't uh, been able to do. I, You know, I was in a desperate state and I bought um, a double quarter pounder from McDonald's because I haven't had a burger for like since before surgery. Uh, and I tried to bite into it and it hurt so much that I got the knife and fork out and I ate it on a plate. So uh, what what do you rate the D's nuts flavor? It tastes like a um, uh, what Hershey's chocolate peanut butter mm. cup. It doesn't smell good. This one. What flavor is this? This is crunch milk chocolate with puffed rice. Okay. Well, crunch. I don't like the sound of on my teeth. Let's give it a go. Maybe break a bit off. Yeah, maybe break a bit off. <laughs> How painful did that look? Uh, almost as painful as it felt. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I'll try again in a couple of months. <laughs> but from look, I gave it a good suck and it tasted quite nice. So good on Mr. Beast. If you if you if you're recovering from jaw surgery, Maybe give it a couple of months and uh, and we'll come back with the taste test later. I'll put that uh, back in my mouth in a few months and I'll go, ooh, it tastes like mold. Um, w- but the D's nuts, good, bad? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Unless you want to sponsor us, Mr. Beast. Then how much were they? $2.50 from Woolies. Is that expensive for That's... chocolate now? Look at how small this bar is. It is really small. Yeah, it's, uh, well, how many grams is that? Thirty-five. But $2. 35 grams, $2.50. Back in my day, you could get a, a 500 gram Feastables from the milk bar for 35 cents <laughs> before inflation hit. You know what? How about this? I, I would rate that. I, I know that I haven't chewed it, but just from the brief suck that I gave it, I would rate that uh, maybe like a, a seven. So it's like, I wouldn't go out of my way to buy it, but if it was like in the impulse, you know, when you, when you go to check out at Coles and Woolies and they have the impulse thing, mm-hmm. if they had it there, I would definitely steal it. Um, <laughs> now, it's time to talk uh, about about something um, that I actually uh, I thought of the other day, and that was um, uh, I keep I I, 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 I keep, every time I see this business name, I think of this, and it makes me laugh. And I I just thought I would love to ask you guys uh, in the comment section on YouTube or on Spotify. They have a comment section now. Um, it's really good. You should check it out. Unless you're on Podbean. I don't know. I'm sure you guys have something like uh, slow downloads and and horrible sounding audio. Um, RSS feeds that don't update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be good. Um, I saw, I keep seeing this business and every time I see their name, it makes me laugh because it just, I know what they're trying to say, but I, I read something else. Uh, and it just got me thinking like unintentionally funny business names are really good. You see them all the time and they make you laugh. 
And I would love to know yours. Like if you've seen an unintentionally funny business name, send it into the show. I want to, I want to hear it. My one that I see everywhere. And every time I see it, it makes me laugh. White lady funerals. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really funny. And I think that's always obviously right. It's, it's a, uh, it's a funeral service dedicated uh, or delivered with the care that only a woman can. But when I read it, I just hear if if your mum died and she's white, give it a us, <laughs> you know. And I think that it that it sounds like that depending on how fast you say the name. <laughs> so in their ads, they'll go white lady funerals, and you'll you'll picture in your head like a compassionate like service provided by a woman dressed in white. <laughs> but if I go white lady funerals, <laughs> <laughs> like oh they do funerals that but they don't do them for Asian women. Or black men. It's just for white ladies. It's like uh, Karen's funerals. That's the only thing that it's for. So uh, every time I see white lady funerals, I just, I just, it makes me laugh because I just immediately picture like a family taking in like their Hispanic grandfather <laughs> and they go, uh, we don't do those. We only do white ladies. Um, so I want to know your, your, uh, your um, unintentionally funny business names. I know there's so many. I was trying to think of them and I know they're out there, but it's one of those things that when you try to think of it, you can't. It's just something that the next time you notice it, send it to me. Um, I've had a pretty good week. I've had a busy week, man. Uh, it's my first kind of proper week of like actually releasing stuff that isn't just like, uh, oh, I'm back. I'm actually releasing videos. And man, they've been going so well. I've been really, really positively surprised by the reception uh, of just like the regular type of uh, content that I've been putting out uh, because obviously you take so much time off and it's like every YouTuber is like, if you take time off, your channel is ruined. It's over. It's so much work to get back there. And views have certainly taken a hit, but I mean, I was, I was thinking like uh, I posted this in, I said this in a vlog that I posted I was thinking that I'd be very lucky to get about 40,000 views on anything that I upload for the next like three months, really. Um, but we're rocketing past that on on everything, which is amazing. And I'm very, very thankful to everyone who's been tuning in and sharing and and especially the comments, like just the, the obviously the comments on the face reveal and everything are like everyone's stoked to see me back. But like the comments on like the the not special amazing comeback video stuff is is uh is also really really cool and very motivating um just uh it's it is funny like so many unprompted comments going oh my god you look so healthy you look so like vibrant and awake and alive and that's how i feel but it is very it's very like um it's cool, I guess, to see other people notice that. It's it makes you realize like how obviously ill I was before. Is just the stark difference, and I guess you maybe wouldn't have noticed it unless I pointed it out. But when you do see the difference of like me from six months ago mm. to me now, it's uh, just my face and my eyes and the way my energy is is completely different, and uh, it's it's getting better every day. I'm still having. I'm, I'm just, I feel like I'm stress testing my life. I'm, I'm adding things very, very slowly, seeing what I can creatively output and enjoy and do well. And I'm just going to keep adding until it's too much. And then I'm going to pull back a little bit and then figure out, okay, is there a better way to do this? Or do I need to outsource it once I have budget? Or do I just need to not do that at all? Um, and at the moment I've done like three YouTube videos in a week, pretty much like about 10 days, which is crazy for me. That's like a wild month yeah. <laughs> for me. And it, and, uh, I got a lot of, I got a lot of messages actually from Patreon supporters and, and just regular people as well. Like, uh, on Instagram and, and even in the comment section of like, Hey man, loving these, but please pace yourself. We don't want you to burn out. And, uh, I am not trying hard to put out this much stuff like it, it feels very easy it feels very natural uh before surgery i would have been like man this is so i'm i'm working so hard to get out these this stuff in this time period but now it's like almost accidental like the the video that the most recent one we did the sniper wolf one that was just like a we just got on a roll on the podcast and i thought oh this is really funny i'll just film a couple of segments to kind of tie it together and then edit it uh, and it turned out to be really awesome. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just really enjoying it, uh, in a way that I have not for like, I don't know, at least 18 months and it feels easy and it feels fun and I want to do it. It feels very natural. So 
I'm glad that people are enjoying it and, and liking it. Um, you know, I thought of, I think I have the, the final hospital story that I've kind of forgotten. Yeah. Um, that is my favorite one. So I, uh, forgot this cause I was in a, in a fugue state, um, with all of the drugs that they put me on. But if, if anyone here has, has, uh, taken anesthetic, right. Or been under general anesthetic, it makes you really constipated and it stops you from doing any toilet activities, oh. right? So I was in ICU for one day and then I was in, uh, and then I was in like, they moved me to the non-emergency intensive ward, like for another night. So I was in hospital for, for two nights. So in ICU, um, so I wake up in ICU and I'm, and I'm on, I'm on, I'm on the whole thing, like the, the heart rate monitors and beep, beep, all of that. I've got uh, nurses checking in on me every seven minutes to make sure that I that I don't die. They're like, and my head's been cut open, and they're like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, <laughs> I've got a whiteboard going, "Fucking let me sleep." Um, but I, I go to sleep, and I wake up, and it's the morning, and uh, they kept me in ICU all that day, and it gets towards the end of the day. Jazz has come and visited me and left and everything, and I have not used the toilet. And uh, when I woke up, when I came to, and when I was a little bit less groggy, one of the one of the nurses comes in, and this guy, and he's a night nurse, right? Now the difference between the female day nurses and the fucking boys at night, big difference. Okay, it's it's four a.m. This guy doesn't want to be there. He knows that he's technically also a security guard. Yeah. <laughs> like he's having none of it. Okay, there's care, and there's fucking take your medicine. All right, or else. And that's what I, that's what I had. And so I wake up and I was given a bedpan because I, cause I couldn't walk. I couldn't get up cause I was all woozy and my blood pressure was weird. And, uh, and the bathroom was like all the way over there. So they're like, we want you to wee in the bedpan. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, I can do that. And, uh, and anyway, it gets to like 5.00 AM. I, the next day I've not I have not weed once. I've not done a poo and I really feel like I, that I don't need to. The, the nurse comes in and he goes, hey man, you have to wait. And I went, huh? And he goes, you, you, you need to wait. I was like, okay. And he gives me the bedpan again. He goes, uh, in the next couple hours, you must wait. I'm like, all right. He doesn't tell me why. And then sure enough, after a little bit, he gives me, I, I just start smashing water and then something starts to happen. And I get a little bit of feeling in my body back and I'm like, oh, I need to wait. Yeah. Uh, and so I get the bed pan out and I, and I, and I, I took me a few minutes, but I rearranged my meat and I, and I placed it in the, the bed pan and I, the, the ICU ward that I was in, it's like as big as this room that we're in right now, but there's a bed and, and there's no privacy at all. Cause it's ICU. You don't want privacy because if someone starts to die, the nurses need to notice. So it's like, and I am right opposite the, the fucking busy hallway where nurses are walking backwards and forward and, and, and it's a long hallway. So for nurses to come into the ward, they got to walk for like two minutes looking at me oh, trying to piss in a bedpan, no privacy at all. And I'm also opposite reception and the receptionist is just sitting at the desk. <laughs> it's 5 a.m. The phone's not ringing. So she's bored. <laughs> And I'm, I'm trying to get my dick out and piss into the bedpan and I, and I'm, and I can't. And then not only that, I've got the, the, the nurse looking at me with a menacing look like this guy better piss now. Oh, no. I'm under so much pressure. I'm also off my fucking face on like, uh, on, um, oxy and, and I don't know what they, that was, I had, I was attached to the IV. I don't know what they were putting in there, but I, I, I was barely there and they're telling me you must piss. All right. Talk about fucking stage fright. I've got about six people watching me. And then and then I just I just give up and I put the bedpan away and I roll over and I go to sleep for a little bit. It felt like hours. It was probably like 15 minutes. The guy wakes me up and he goes, Hey man, did you wee? And I'm like, uh -huh. and he has a look at the bedpan. I hadn't weed. And he goes, You have to wee. I'm like, all uh right. -huh. And then he walks away and he goes, I'm gonna come back later. You need to wee. And I was like, okay. And I'm sure he was looking after me, but it felt very threatening. It felt like, uh, it felt like uh, you know, I was doing an audition for Harvey Weinstein. Oh. You must piss. I'm going to come back, and if you haven't weed in, in, in my dinner plate, I'm going to be very upset, and you're not going to be the next Wonder Woman. Um, 
So anyway, he walks away, and then and then not only is my bed opposite the long hallway with all the the nurses and some of the visiting people who walk towards me. I'm also opposite the receptionist and I'm also opposite wherever they keep the charts, like right there in front of me, like almost at my feet. And there's just a glass wall separating it. Six nurses are huddled around like this filing cabinet, looking through the thing, having a chat and I'm trying to piss. And because I keep moving and I'm trying to cover my modesty with the blanket that's not big enough. So it keeps falling off and I'm trying to piss, but I can't sit up because I don't know if it hurts my face. So I just get my whole dick out and I'm trying to piss and everyone's looking at me and I just can't. And then the guy comes in and he goes, Hey man, are you pissing? And I'm like, no, I also don't even need to go. Like I don't need to go. I'm just pissing to make, trying to piss to make this guy stop telling me to piss. And he comes back in and he goes, have you done a wee yet? And I went, huh? no. And he goes, look, man, my shift ends in 40 minutes. If you haven't used the bedpan in 20 minutes, I'm going to have to put a catheter in you. Oh, no. And I went, oh, thanks, man. That makes me feel so relaxed. Now I can wee. A threat to put a tube in my cock. Oh, now I can do it. Great. So this guy's threatening to put a tube in my penis, thinking that that's going to motivate me to wee. Hey, dude, how about a glass of water and, I don't know, the sound of rain on the speaker? <laughs> that would help me a little bit more, don't you think? So now I'm just trying to, to pee, and I just can't. I cannot, and it's not because of the drugs. It's because of the stage fright and the threat, all right? So many people have trouble using the urinal when the guy is when a guy is standing next to them at the next one. I knew a guy who could not wee even in the toilet stalls if there was anyone else in the bathroom. It was Radio Mike. <laughs> you just, I'm fucking expected to, to to piss under threat of a catheter in front of like 15 strangers staring at me through a glass wall like I'm some fucking bug. So anyway, I can't do it. 15 minutes go by. He goes, hey, dude, five minutes and we're doing the catheter. And I'm like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and he's going, it's for your own safety. If you don't wee, then then you ha you ha have to count that. I'm like, I don't want to do it. And he goes, man, he's just, he, just, he, just loses, he just cracks at him. He goes, dude, if you don't wee, I'm getting the catheter. Okay? That's how it's going to be. Like I'm not weighing on purpose. Now, like he's treating me like I'm a toddler. I said, when you go to the bathroom, I can't weigh when you're looking at me. Anyway, <laughs> I come up with this genius plan. I go, huh? And he comes over and I go, I need a poo. <laughs> and he goes, I'll get the other bedpan. And I went, no, I want to do the bathroom. And the, bar, and the toilet is all the way over there. Now, my plan is I'm going to get up and I'm going to just walk, hobble over to the toilet. I haven't gotten out of bed yet at all, right? So this is, I don't even know if I can walk. I'm like, I'm going to the toilet. And I'm going to sit on the toilet and play games on my phone, not piss, come out, flush and go, got it all out, man. All good. I don't need to wee. And then I have this full back and forth argument with him. He goes, I don't think you can stand on it. Oh, no, no. <laughs> He goes, I think that you should stay here and just I'll put the catheter in. <laughs> and then he goes, all right, let me get another nurse and we'll walk you to the bathroom. Like, all right. And he gets his other nurse and they stand me up. All right. And and they've only seen me lying down. Right. Oh. And it's two Asian guys who are maybe five foot seven. I'm six foot eight. All right. So when I'm they sit down on the bed next to me, I put my arms around their, their their shoulders and they go one, two, three, they stand up. I bring, I, I come up with them and then, and then I stand up the rest of the way and I'm standing up by myself and they realize how tall I am and they're like, oh my God, sit back down. Because <laughs> they can't hold me up properly. And they go, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get um, the IV drip stand and you're gonna hold onto that with one hand and I'm gonna hold onto your shoulder on your other side. I'm like, all right. And so we do that and I, I'm taking tiny steps over and I 
the nurse was 100% right. I should not have been standing, <laughs> but there was no way I was going to let that guy put a tube in my dick. So I hobble over and uh, and I, I'm, I'm going to be real. Uh, I'm not sure if I lost balance on on my way to the toilet, but I certainly lost consciousness a couple of times, just for a little bit, <laughs> half a second, came in and out, caught myself, didn't didn't fall, probably stumbled. All right, that guy, I, I, if his supervisor was watching, probably got a performance review after that trip to the bathroom. But I make it into the bathroom, I open it, and he goes, I'm going to come in with you. And I went, uh-uh, and I just <laughs> shut it, and I locked it. I said, there's no fucking way you're coming in so you can see me lie. Because that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to watch me piss so that he could put it. I don't know. He really wanted to put a catheter in me. I don't know. Maybe it's his thing. But he's standing on the other other side of the bedroom, uh, other, other side of the bathroom door. And he goes, all right, I'm going to come in. And I was running, uh, uh, and I shut it and I locked it in his face. Uh, not knowing that that's not how a bathroom in the ICU ward of a fucking hospital works. You can't lock them. The, all you can do is turn the sign that says occupied. It doesn't lock. So I shut it and I lock it and then I walk away. And then he just unlocks it from his side, opens it. And he goes, I can't come in. I went, I can't, I heard, I don't know. And he goes, all right whatever and he helps me sit down on the toilet um and i'm just thinking all i have to do is sit down for like a minute and then i'm gonna flush it and then i'm gonna get him to help me up and i'm gonna say yeah man i just did the biggest wee and poo of my life and i sit down and he goes all right i'm gonna come back in in a minute and check on you and as soon as he shut the door uh and left me alone i just had a wee it was it was, there was nothing, it was, there was, the medicine wasn't the problem. It wasn't uh, anything other than a guy threatening me with a catheter to, to wee. That was what was stopping me. I had stage fright and then I was being threatened and then I just did a wee. And then, and then, I, and then I decided to not flush it because I knew he was on to me. Didn't flush it. I stood up and because uh, and I really didn't want the catheter. Uh, and uh, I pressed the nurse button and he comes running in thinking that I'd fallen over or something because I because I didn't know, but it was like an emergency button that I'd hit in the toilet and I press it and he comes in and he goes, are you, are you all right? Like he, he, he opens the door and he's looking at the floor looking for me and then and then I'm just like sitting on the toilet. He goes, you okay? I'm like, uh-huh. And then I stand up and I and I, and I go, look. And and he, he looks at me and he goes, why would I want to look in the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I thought you wanted to say, and he goes, what? I'm like, I did and he goes, huh? And he, and I'm like, and he goes, uh, I think you should go to bed, man. <laughs> you know, I, I, I just thought, I thought, and, th and that's when I realized like what I was doing was like what a two year old does. Like, look, mommy, I did a poo, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't get a catheter. <laughs> so huge win for me there, man. That was. I can't believe I forgot that story. Actually, yes, I can. I was on a lot of drugs, but uh, narrowly avoided the catheter there, which is which is really good. Um, all right. So I want. I also wanted to talk about. Man, I saw the funniest thing. Halloween's happening, and I love I love Halloween because Halloween has morphed from. Firstly, we don't really do Halloween in Australia, but Halloween really amuses me because of how much the holiday has changed, okay? Halloween is no longer for children to go out and experience their neighborhood and engage with neighborly activities and do trick-or-treating. Halloween has now turned into uh, those children's parents' excuses to dress up as whores and post it on Instagram. That's what Halloween is for now. It's for celebrities to spend like a thousand dollars on a makeup artist and three thousand dollars on a custom made costume for an Instagram post while they give their child like a two dollar mask from fucking Walmart and go, go play with your sister in the back room. Halloween is for adults now. It's not for kids. Did you see any children celebrating Halloween can I show you something really funny? Okay. So Phoebe, girlfriend's big fan of Halloween. She used to do the trick or treating when she was younger and everything. Yep. So we put out, um, we put out chocolates like Freddos and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then we both had to leave the house. So I'll just show you. Sorry, I'm just finding it. I turned my sensor lights off 
so that no one would, would approach the home. <laughs> That's how we did Halloween because we're Australian. Oh, this is a ring camera. Okay, so that's Eshes that are not dressed up stealing. <laughs> and that's what happens when you try to do Halloween in Frankston. How much stuff did they steal? They stole, a, it was like a whole bag of Freddo. <laughs> <laughs> They're not dressed up at all. And they all they all sprinted away. This is at like 4.15 That's PM. so funny. Probably they just, just finished whole, school. And that was, they... So no one got any of the frogs. When I ended up coming home, I put more out because yeah. there's a bunch of little girls that came to the front door knocking. Like there's a sign that said, please take one, <laughs> trick or treat. <laughs> so a bunch of families came to our door and were like looking sad. That's so funny. That's awesome. Can we put that in the show? Unless your whole front door. Oh, I think that's fine. It doesn't okay. show where I live. Yeah, okay. Great. Um, that is uh, that is so oh, Frankston. Maybe. Maybe yeah, look, so. we might uh, look to, to, to anyone listening on Podbean. Um, it was just it was just three, I don't know, 13 year old boys in Nike track suits <laughs> who just stole the entire box immediately and ran away. Yeah. And I really like that they all put the hood up to uh, to like like you would call the police <laughs> and they would get caught. And that's and that's, you know, that's the future generation of Frankston right there. Those are our next young leaders. <laughs> We're going to be all right. There's been a lot of talk here of Frankston improving. The council is is uh, is removing uh, rubbish and they're and they're and they're making sure that big franchises come. We got a TGI Fridays mm -hmm. recently. We're getting a, a YOMG, a, a frozen yogurt and I burger store. Yeah. Okay, it's gentrifying in real time, and I see that and it disgusts me. But every now and then there's a little there's a little sliver of hope, and that is when I catch the bus. Some 13-year-old girls wearing a push-up bra calling the bus driver a putrid dog. <laughs> and then when Keelan puts out tr uh, uh, lollies for Halloween, three Eshes in Nike's tra track suits just steal it immediately and run away and no one gets any chalky. That's Frankston culture. And then a bunch of other Eshes came later that night not dressed up and yep. just came to the door to like, just, just get trick or treat. Give me. <laughs> hey, give me. That's great. That's Frankston. That's excellent. Um... Okay, I uh, what I want to talk about. Oh, okay. So, so last week, uh, we asked uh, we asked you guys uh, on Spotify. I talked about um, I had this really funny idea. The what I think is a really funny idea that Keelan does not find even slightly amusing. That I think that it would be really funny for like the day I get my braces off. To just oh, go right. and get custom grills made, <laughs> yeah. and just swap them out, and I think that'd be so funny. I, I, and then I can go. Oh, I was so used to braces, I decided to get grills. Yeah. I think that is really funny because most people, when they get their braces off, they go, "Look at my nice teeth." Fuck that. I think it'd be way funnier to just show up with grills. Uh, now, Keelan really didn't find it anywhere near as amusing as what I did, um, and uh, so we asked the we asked the question. And uh, we have, um, uh, it absolutely is as funny as you think it is. Uh, no, not funny at all. Uh, not as funny, not funny. It is a good idea. No, you're insane. Yes, no. You should get grills. Don't do it. Uh, you should get grills so the rest of us have a chance at getting women. If you have grills, there is no way I'll be able to get any women. Uh Yes, no. The most expensive grills you can afford, obviously. No, don't do it. Yes. And that's all of the responses. So entirely 50-50, people either vehemently agree or disagree. And that to me is even funnier than everyone finding it funny, is if half of you go, that's fucking stupid. So this is only encouraging me. I'm starting up a savings account, patreon.com slash Lou Spears. Uh, obviously, you guys have gotten me through the surgery. You guys have gotten me through my orthodontics treatment. You guys have gotten me through my recovery. Now it's time for you to buy me grills, <laughs> which I find funny. And from Keelan's lack of laughter, he doesn't. <laughs> How encouraging. So that's really good. Um, but I like the responses. I love Spotify for podcasters. What a great service that is. <laughs> Can you tell we're trying to get more Spotify listeners? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, I think I think now it's probably time for, now that I just put the laptop down, it's time for um, to talk about, oh, man. 
recently, right, I was talking about Halloween, right, because um, I couldn't tell if this was a Halloween thing or a brand deal thing, but um, the massive TikTok star, Charlie D'Amelio, posted this video of her working at Walmart as a cashier, yes. dressed up as the Walmart employee, and I, I love, this is my favorite type of tone deaf influencer is when an influencer dresses up and performs the job of a poor person and goes, look at me, isn't this crazy? And, and, and it's like a brand deal and they're getting paid like, I don't know, tens of thousands of dollars to do a, a Walmart, uh, a Walmart customer service job for like 30 minutes. And they go, look at me. And often they're selling their own product that they're making even more money out of. I think she was selling her own popcorn or That's something. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's Amelia popcorn. Yeah, which is which is great. Good for you. But I think that's I think that's like uh, if there's one thing that's really going to win you points in this horrific cost of living crisis, it's dressing up as a person working minimum wage and going, guys, this is so much fun. Uh, no, it's not. It's Walmart. Yeah. It's hell. Okay. And all these people are like. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Millionaire, for dressing up and cosplaying as a, a minimum wage worker and go, look at so much fun it is. It's not fun. It's fucking Walmart. Happy snacks is what they're promoting. Happy snacks. Yeah. See, uh, I, I would need happy snacks if I was if I was like selling guns to the next school shooter. Be happy Walmart. snacks, rather. Sorry. Be happy snacks. Yeah. See, don't, don't be sad. Just be happy. And I think, look, <clears throat> I think that it can be done... Uh, it can be done in a cool way and it can be done in an incredibly tone deaf way. I do think that getting a millionaire TikToker who's never had a job ever <laughs> to dress up as like a, a minimum wage worker and go, look how fun it is working the checkout at Walmart. That's hell, miss. I don't know if you know that, but that is hell. Doing that uh, eight hours a day, five days a week, sometimes more, that's not fun. Uh, those people can't even afford to buy your popcorn. <laughs> nah, good on her. She's having a crack. Um, with that, what? Why does it say my name on the board? Oh, okay. All right, I have something special for you, Keelan. Now, Keelan, uh, you uh, actually recently launched your own podcast. Well, it, this comes out on Sunday. On Tuesday, okay, my, my podcast comes out. Yeah, yeah. So, so make sure you're off Spotify on Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, but Sunday's a great day to tune in. Unless, in we, un unless, like last week, I forget to upload it, then Monday's also a pretty good day. But not Tuesday. Unless I forget on Monday too. Then Tuesday's great. Um, now, it's about VHS tapes, which you Blue have been... Rays. Uh, oh, it's about Blu-ray. So it's you've moved on from the VHS. Yeah, it's called Keelan and Tyler Review Blu-ray Podcast. Okay. Well, uh, you... Uh, do you still collect VHS tapes? Or yeah. are you... Uh, you still do? Yeah, I still do. Okay. But I'm very select. I don't just buy anything. Yeah. Now this is something that I that that everyone in the world has been giving you a lot of shit for. Oh, a lot um, of love. Uh, I wouldn't say that, but a lot of like, what are you doing? Yeah. Why are you spending hundreds of dollars on on just any VHS? There was a time where you were just the least discerning collector. <laughs> you were just like, if it's in VHS format, I'll have it. Yeah. If it's Titanic, if it's Shrek, if it's uh, if it's like a a. a episode six seven and nine of an obscure tv show if it was someone's family movie you would buy I love it. the family movies they're fun those are good yeah but i have a whole youtube channel where i just digitize home tapes and yeah. then upload the tapes right what an invasion of privacy <laughs> isn't that good imagine imagine if if, <laughs> if one day like 20 years ago you've just filmed on your phone right just like a a, a day you went to the beach with your family and then somehow that footage ends up at an, at an op shop and some dude you've never met, never heard of, just uploads it so that 17 people can watch you have an intimate family trip at the beach. Mm. That's good. <laughs> well, a lot of people gave you shit for this, but yeah. uh, I don't know if you've seen this, but this is uh, Pete Davidson on uh, A Tonight Show recently. I started collecting VHSs that oh. were sealed in the box like three years ago. Cause I was really high one night and I thought, I thought cause like, uh, in, uh, listen to this guys. So in 2026, it'll be 20 years since the last VHS was made, right? So 20 years goes by, that's a, enough time for people to be like, oh, that was cool, remember? Like vinyl? Yes. So I bought all the sealed ones that exist, like three to 5,000 tapes. What the fuck? Yeah. 
You guys sound like my mom. No, no, no. 5,000 tapes Pete Davidson bought, okay? So I would like to apologize to you. Thank you. Because you don't have a problem. No. He does. Yeah. Well, actually... I would like to rescind that apology. Okay. I take it back. Sure. And I and I and I actually restate everything that I said to you that I just previously took back and apologized for because I just remembered that Pete Davidson's a millionaire <laughs> and and you're you're here on uh, volunteering. Yeah, free. Because uh, I can't afford to pay you, so so you can't afford to buy VHS tapes. Mm. But anyway, this is the second half. But you think you're gonna blow out on that? Listen to this. <laughs> Yeah, that's oh, just. Uh, yeah. Here's some oh. of the packages that arrive yes. at your house. That looks my, like your uh, house. Yeah, yeah, that is what my apartment did look like in 2020. His girlfriend is very mad at him. My girlfriend um, is also the, mad at that, me. I have a good about three to five thousand. But Listen hear me out. This. Hear me out. So, but as of uh, a month ago, uh, sealed VHSs are now going for like twenty to thirty grand a pop. Oh! <laughs> 30 grand. Rocky just sold for like 27 That's because he just bought the yes. entire supply yes. in the yeah. entire world. Yep. It's my game stuff. Like, this is <laughs> like Welcome to investing. He bought all of them. This is diamonds. Buy all of them. Restrict the market. Tell everyone they're going to be huge on a fucking Tonight Show. Get millions of views. Boo. That, that $27,000 Rocky VHS tape, now it's worth 50. I hate him. I hate what he's done to Kim Kardashian and the Kardashian family, and I hate him for what he's done to the VHS market. Well, look, as as a recently handsome comedian, he's become my idol. Because <laughs> he's ugly? No, because he's a sex symbol, and oh. and I would like to be there. I, oh. some, I, I don't I don't see it either. I think that some people are are, are, are seen as hot because they're seen as hot. Mm. Like one person says it and then another person is like, I guess they are. Then they'll <laughs> say it and then bam. That's how we, I mean, that's the Kardashians are famous because they're famous. Pete's sexy because people say he's sexy. Timothy Chalamet, great example. <laughs> oh, I think he's really hot. Would you think he's hot if you saw him working at KFC? No, you wouldn't. Okay. Yeah. You think he's hot because he, because other people say he's hot. Okay. Some but of the rumors all, I've heard about Timothy Chalamet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's not him. start this. This is a obscure Luke and Lewis joke that never took off. <laughs> Actually, I don't never even know if it was air. It never even went to air. It was behind the scenes, and uh, and let's keep it that way. But anyway, if you want to hear my podcast, Keelan and Tyler Blu-ray review podcast mm -hmm. comes out at Tuesday, on Tuesdays at five PM. There's going to be ten episodes. Right. Well, and uh, if you subscribe to my um, my channel and you become a member. That's enough. Twenty dollar member, you get it early. I, I'll I, I would like to apologize to the listeners. He's only getting those plugs out because he is here uh, of his own free will for free. <laughs> but hopefully. <laughs> We'll be able to buy his silence. You know what that'll be? That'll be like when you, I'll just pay you 20 bucks a month, like YouTube uh, premium, no ads. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's get into miscellaneous bit at the end. Uh, the part of the, the worst part of the podcast where we answer your emails, uh, your life, ad life uh, advice questions and read any stories uh, that you would, that you think that uh, I would enjoy. Uh, if you want to send an email, send it through to podcast at loosebeers.com. That's podcast at loosebeers.com, all right? This one is from Margaret. Uh, this is great. Subject, the time Make-A-Wish took my wish back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just want to start this out by saying thanks to you. I've been laughing at your videos for years now and I've loved your content since your ABCDE movie. That would be one of the one, uh, video. That would be one of the first videos you and I made, I, I see. think. No, I've been no? working with you for a few months. Okay, well, that, maybe that was the first good one that we made because yeah. I that was a good video. I, do I think it was. Absidy. Abacadu. Um, happy to see you back and feeling better. Thank you, Margaret. Time for the story. Uh, I was born with a medical condition, cystic, cystic hygroma. And because of that, I had a hygroma. That's a good one. <laughs> I've, I've, oh, my hygroma. <laughs> my hygroma is acting up. Uh, <laughs> I was born with a medical condition, cystic hygroma. What is that? I want to Google the symptoms. Is it as funny as it sounds? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, my hygroma. Uh, let's Hygromer. have a look. Uh, what is cystic hygroma? <laughs> Grow me. <laughs> mm, Grow me. A cystic hygroma is a birth defect that appears as a sac like structure with a thin wall that most commonly occurs in the head and neck area of an infant. Oh, my hygroma. <laughs> so it's basically just a giant growth. Uh, it can develop from pieces of material that carry fluid and white blood cells. Oh, we'll just put a pin in it. Um, gross. Uh, 
Disgusting. Okay. I uh, Googling that. I closed the email. Great. Excellent, Lewis. Um, well, gee, the podcast is back, isn't it? Okay. Uh, be- I-, I was I was born with a medical condition, cystic hygroma, <laughs> and because of that, I had many major surgeries during my childhood. The oh. first of which was open heart surgery when I was only eleven days old. I'll oh, suck it up. You probably don't even remember it. The first couple of years of my life were really rocky, and I lived in and out of hospitals. Uh, I, I I can relate to that. So uh, so did I to an extent. I had really bad asthma. Um, around the time when I was five and six, my parents had been told that I would qualify for Make-A-Wish, so they started the paperwork and asked, and I asked to eat to meet Wolverine, Hugh Jackman. I love X-Men then, and I still do. Uh, anyway, moving forward, at the time, all of this uh, had uh, at the time all of this had been de- uh, I at the time of all of this had been declined by many surgeons to perform a very high risk surgery that would remove one of the inflamed cysts located on the left side of my neck, due to the fact that it was too close to my jugular vein. This is prime Make a Wish uh, fodder. Like you're making the billboard, okay? Uh, a little girl with a giant fucked growth on her neck. This is Margaret. She has cystic hygroma. (laughs) And she wants to meet Hugh Jackman. That'd be good. I mean, get into where the claws and he could cut it out for you. Huge rack, man. (laughs) Hence why I was qualifying for... uh, uh, Please leave in the comment section, how funny was that joke out of 10? (laughs) I'm going to give it a two. Hence why I was qualifying for (laughs) Make-A-Wish because let's just say my theme song was knocking on heaven's door. So this girl was going to die. Just as the Make-A-Wish paperwork is finalizing, uh, uh, a a doctor invented a procedure that would shrink the cyst rather than needing to remove it. And this same doctor decided that I would be the perfect candidate for the procedure. So I was flown to Ohio on Christmas Eve and was officially a healthy kid on Christmas Day. So after the paperwork was submitted, they found out I was healthy and canceled Hugh Jackman. What a bummer. That sucks. What a bummer. How about you get to meet Hugh Jackman as a reward for su- for surviving cystic hygroma? <laughs> I've been healthy since. I'm 19 now, thanks to that doctor. I find it hilarious, though, that six-year-old me was so close to meeting him and was very disappointed that I survived my surgery. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's bullshit. Let him meet, let him meet Hugh Jackman. You know, at, le- at least then you would have, like, uh, at least a kid who could... Um, uh, tell you about the impact that that Make a Wish made on them instead of all these other kids that uh, that oh. die with their memories. Oh. Uh, oh, that one's a bit sad, but also kind of funny. <laughs> um, okay, and then lastly, all right, story time. That's okay, great. this one is really short, and I'm only reading it because I want this person to email me back and fucking elaborate. Okay, <laughs> because this is this. This person has written one, two, three, four lines, and one of those lines is sent from my iPhone. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to need a lot more than this, and we're going to check in back next episode, and you're going to – I want at least – I'm sending you homework. I want at least three paragraphs, maybe four. And everyone in the comment section is going to tell you specifically what you need to elaborate on because there's way more to this story than, than the three lines you've written plus sent from my iPhone. <laughs> right, so th- here, here it is. Story time and, and then an emoji smiley face. This is just like pumped out on the phone. Like, like put the phone down, get yourself to a fucking computer and rewrite this. <laughs> so recently, by the way, so that was one of the lines. So we've only got, <laughs> we've only got two left. Recently, my mother had an affair with a Mormon. What? I know. I also want to know heaps more, but that's all that's all they say. She works with his wife. Oh no. Now that in itself two things that need to be explained way more with heaps more paragraphs. Your mother had an affair with a Mormon. I want to know about the Mormon. He's a terrible Mormon, and I also want to know about she works with the Mormon's wife. Juicy, tell me more. Which one? The Mormon. Because <laughs> don't Mormons have a lots of wives? Oh, well, maybe he's a good Mormon then. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, 
was he wearing the underwear that they all wear? Recently, my mother had an affair with a Mormon. She works with his wife. Recently, my parents split up. The affair had been going on since July. It's now October. They now live together. Hashtag Mormon life. I got a lot of questions. Go back to the fucking computer and type it out. Beat by beat. I want to know everything. Guys, write down in the comment sections what this person needs to elaborate on because this story is not done. What questions do you have? Well, I want to know, like, were you living with your mum? Do you live with your mum still? I want to know. Great questions. Yeah. What What's happened between your parents? How did, other than the, how did they, was the affair found out? Yeah. If so, did, you, did your, your dad find out or did your mum's co-worker find out that she'd been sleeping with her husband? Great question. What, what do they do at work? What's their job? What is how dad how did work? you meet the Mormon? Did you meet at work when he was coming to pick up his wife? Did you meet at like a work party where your coworker was like, this is my husband. And he was like, I love Jesus and pussy. Like, where, how, like how did this happen? Have you spoken to your mum? Are you angry at your mum? What does your dad think? Does your mum still have the job? What is the job? I have more questions. Do you have brothers and sisters? What do they think? Are you team mum or team dad? Uh, another great question. Like how, how the fuck did you think this was acceptable to send in the condition that it's in three lines? I mean, this is, this is a, this is a series of podcast episodes that could be spent on these three lines. Another question. Why did you not delete the bit that says sent from my <laughs> iPhone? That would annoy me. That's like an advertisement that I wouldn't want to be sending out there. No one needs to know what device it's sent from. I An another question, emoji in the subject line of the email. Interesting choice. You don't see that often. I have a follow-up to the, the sent from my iPhone. Uh -huh. Why are you using the iPhone mail app and not the Gmail app? A brilliant question. The <laughs> Gmail app is is incredibly... Well, let me see. She has a Gmail. Oh, they have a Gmail account. <laughs> What's Why? the name? Uh, well, hang on. Let me. Let me. Uh, they. I think they've actually come to a show before. So, uh, uh, how about this? If if they don't send me a proper email, I'll just say their home address <laughs> and their credit card information and phone number. Okay. I would never do that. Would that be their mum's home or their dad's home? Well, let's. How about how about this? <laughs> if they don't send the email with enough information, you and me will drive there and ask the mum directly. <laughs> Okay. And, and do a whole podcast episode with your mother in your house. I like it. Um, we would never do that. Oh. But how good would it, would it be if we did? <laughs> so I'm going to need a lot more information for that. And guys, write in the comment section, what else do you want to know about this? Recently, my mother had an affair with a Mormon. She works with his wife. Recently, my parents split up. The affair has been going on since July. It's now October they now live together. Hashtag Mormon life. The people who listen to this show frustrate me to no end because <laughs> how can this person tell me this story in three lines whereas the guy with the worst, most boring, <laughs> nonsensical, not even worth mentioning story can write six paragraphs. <laughs> this, is, this is what's fucked. And someone asked, well, what was the name of uh, the Machella Hazon book you talked about last week? Uh, it's just Machella Hazon traditional Italian cooking, like <laughs> 700 pages. You, like, for, for God's sake, how the fuck are you that stupid <laughs> that you could listen to me say the bitch's name and describe the book and, and your solution is to fucking email me in, with her name instead. Of, well, let, how about this? Let me, and by the way, they spelled their name wrong, which I'm going to forgive because it doesn't, it doesn't spell like how you say it, okay? <laughs> but let me, let me see what happens when I type into Google what they sent me, the incorrect spelling. Let me just Google just the name. I'm not even going to Google a cookbook, all right? Um, the first fucking result is, by the way, the only book she's published. Okay, so you know what? Maybe you're dumb. And 
You know what's interesting? This person has written almost as much as the previous person. <laughs> so uh, all I'm saying, guys, is love your support, loving all the comments, but step your game up, okay? Disappointed in all of you. And I will be metering out uh, collective punishment. One last thing, I've started vlogging. Uh, and uh, check out the, the second channel. It'll be out by now. Uh, Lou 2 on YouTube. I've started a vlog. I'm going to be posting weekly. I'm figuring out what I want the vlog to be. I'm figuring out how, uh, how I'm going to film it and what I'm going to, how I'm going to do it. But uh, I think it's a little experiment for me. It's a, again, like uh, if, if you've been around for a really long time, which I know uh, a lot of the podcast listeners have, I used to vlog way 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 back like i think 2014 or 2015 did you ever see them yeah 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 I, before i started working with you yeah i used to, i think i did like four episodes maybe uh of a vlog and i was like oh man i would like to do a vlog but i don't want to like i don't want to like hey guys welcome to the you know i don't want to do that so i just started filming like little snippets of my day uh very heavily inspired by joji vlog which was uh, Filthy Frank's vlog that he did very briefly that he ended up scrubbing from the internet. I don't even know if you can watch it anymore. It's taken down pretty much everywhere. Um, but I started doing that and I really enjoyed it. And then uh, I just fell into like the YouTube trap of like David Dobrik, Logan Paul, 2015 style. Like, oh, if you're not like attaching your friend to a crane and swinging them into the side of it, it's not even worth pulling the camera out. Like you have to... I got into this weird thing of like, oh, if I don't like do something for the vlog, I shouldn't vlog because it's boring. Whereas now I've kind of gone back to the original thing of what it was, which is like, I'm not going to do anything for the vlog. I'm just going to film little snippets of my life and kind of present it uh, as a more honest, uh, here's actually what I'm doing and what I'm thinking type vlog. Um, so check it out. I put out the first episode. It's kind of like a pilot. I filmed a little bit. Keelan features in it. I guess if you could call it a feature. It turns out he didn't even know the camera was rolling. So I guess that makes it even more candid. And quite funny, I watched it this morning and I realized that you're talking to me and I'm just giving you peanuts. I'm just giving you nothing. Just not response. listening. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Just, uh, just really like I'm like, hey, man, I'm working on this new thing. And you're like, oh, yeah, cool, man. <laughs> You know, there's even a moment I realized that you made a joke and I didn't even respond. Didn't, didn't even respond. <laughs> and that's the type of fucking attitude I deal with every day. Okay. That, you know what? You get what you pay for. <laughs> so check out the vlog. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I think it's good. I'm happy with it. Uh, I, I think it's like an experiment for me of like, um, because I'm really trying to stay present in the moment. It's something that I've really struggled with, and it's something that I I think that I like physically wasn't capable of doing when how with with how sick I was and how difficult everything was and and how stressed the lack of sleep made me. So now I'm really trying to stay present, and I'm really like, it's like an experiment of um, can I create a vlog without uh, filming everything and without always thinking of the camera. And without going, oh, maybe I should, like, how can I, can I vlog and stay present, basically? You know, like, mm -hmm. I don't want to be, uh, like, a, a, the most obvious example of this is the person who, who spends $100 on a concert ticket and just fucking thinks about their stories or their, what they're filming or the TikTok they're going to make out of instead of just putting the phone down and going, oh, my God, how amazing is this moment? This person who's come from overseas, I probably won't even see them for the next five years if I'm lucky. How cool that I get to experience this. Instead, they're just putting their phone up and thinking about, oh, I'm going to make this an Instagram story. Mm. You know, uh, I don't want, the, I don't want my life to be that of like, oh, what should I film? So I think I'm just going to film things that I find interesting and, and film like thoughts and uh, ideas that I have that aren't necessarily comedy. Cause I do have all, a lot of these thoughts and I don't really know where to put them. I write them down every morning in my journal. Uh, and then, and then I think, oh, I would like to kind of do something with these, but I have no outlet uh, for it so the vlog uh might be that or it might be funny or it might be it's going to be whatever the fuck it is it's going to be uh just whatever i happen to be doing that week so i would like for you guys to check it out 
And I think with that, we're going to end the episode. Thank you very much for listening. We're going to continue on on Patreon. If you want to listen to that, it'll be up right now on Patreon as well as the giant backlog. You get access to a Discord server, early access to the podcast. And uh, we think we've got it all set up to just come out through Spotify. So you don't even need the Patreon app uh, to get it. So check that out, patreon.com slash Lou Spears. And uh, I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, and I hope you enjoy the vlog and all the videos that I'm putting out because I'm having fun. All right. Uh, talk to you soon. Have a shit one. Bye.